Bobby is a 56-year-old carpenter who presents with poor posturing and intermittent paresthesias into his right forearm and right hand. He complains of discomfort when his right arm is kept overhead for prolonged periods. During the exam, right rotary winging and an elevated right scapula is noted. Which of the following is the best intervention to address this patient's condition? So we have A, chest press and static stretching of the deep neck flexors. B, we have static stretching of the upper trapezius and the levator scap. Uh, C is wall push-ups and static upper trapezius stretching. And then D is static stretching of the pectoralis minor and the levator scapulae. So a lot of you all are going with D, it looks like. Lynn's going with D, Ancy's going with D. Uh, just a lot of Ds. So let's go ahead and take this out, starting from the top. So we have Bobby is this 56-year-old carpenter who presents with poor posturing uh, and intermittent paresthesia in the right forearm and hand. Okay, so there's a lot of, a lot of stuff in this statement here. I really want to slow up a little bit and look at some important things. The fact that the guy's a carpenter, the fact that he has poor posturing. I really want y'all to answer this for me. Like, make this make this a little bit more on the interactive side. Tell me... What you think about as far as this whole carpenter, like what, what is like poor posturing for them? What do you expect to see with this particular patient? When we say poor posturing, what does that really mean? That should already be, be you know, churning in your mind as to what you envision there. All right. So are, are some of y'all saying rounded shoulder posture? I'm, I'm, I should be seeing some of that rounded shoulder posture. And then these intermittent paresthesias into the right forearm and hand, I'm already seeing it, A.B. saying thoracic outlet syndrome. I like that. I like that. Thoracic outlet syndrome, we know that that's very consistent with someone who has poor posture. All right? It also can be like uh, overexcitation or facilitation of the scalenes can cause thoracic outlet. But a lot of times it's present because of some postural dysfunction. Rounded shoulder posturing, forward head posture, all of that. Okay, and that's what I'm expecting here. And the intermittent paresthesia is into the right forearm, the right hand. Again, that's that's consistent with thoracic outlet. All right, so that's what I'm thinking right now. Now, as we move down the question, we see, well, he complains of discomfort when his right arm is kept overhead for prolonged periods. Now, there are other conditions that you could have thought of. Maybe this being a cervical radiculopathy, right? That could cause the paresthesias into the right forearm and hand. So you could have been thinking something cervical spine. But now his right arm is kept overhead for prolonged periods. That's even more so support for the fact that this guy has thoracic outlet. Notice that they're not saying anything about cervical spine mobility or anything along the lines of that. So I'm not really thinking of a cervical radiculopathy. Are y'all following me right now? Is this making sense? I see you, Israel. I see you coming in to join me tonight, baby. Is that making sense to you? All right. Why we're sticking with thoracic outlet? All right. Let's continue down the line. It says during the examination, right rotary winging. Oh, this is important, baby. It's important. I need one of y'all to, to be a winner right now and tell me what the heck that is. And then the person has an elevated right scapula, which most of us are familiar with that. You know, we just got that elevated right scapula. Cool. So finally, which of the following is the best intervention to address the patient's condition? Well, what's the condition, people? What is that? Didn't we already say that? That was the thoracic outlet, right? So what is the best intervention to address this patient's condition? All right. All right. So before we go in and start knocking out these answer choices and dominating this question, I need to go back up and I need somebody to tell me what's going on with this rotary wing. What does that really mean? Now, this can sometimes be a little confusing, right? Because there's different types of winging that you can get of the scapula. You have medial border winging. All right. You also have winging when it comes to the inferior angle of the scapula where it kind of protrudes outward. That's called rotary winging. So that protruding of the inferior angle of the scapula is called rotary winging. And it typically happens, obviously, when we're we're moving through the motion of the scapula into like an upward rotation. You can see that rotary winging. But bottom line, it is an inferior uh, uh, angle of the scapula protrusion. 
That's rotary winging, not medial border, baby. I know a lot of you all, uh, you know, looking at this may have been thinking, hmm, you know, serratus anterior does a lot of the winging on this beautiful Halloween night. Serratus anterior does a, a bit of the winging, but not rotary winging. It does medial border winging. It's a little different. All right. So now knowing that, we have to think about, well, what can cause rotary winging? That's really important. And also, what can cause this elevated right scapula? That's also important. All right? So, rotary winging, what can potentially cause that? Y'all can put this answer down for me. Um, the pectoralis minor is something that can cause that. And also, lower trap weakness can cause that. So, pectoralis minor tightness... And lower trap weakness can cause it. Also, the elevated right scapula, y'all tell me what can cause it. All right, let's go down to the answer choice. So chest press and static stretching of the deep neck flexors. Well, here's the deal. With this patient who's coming in with thoracic outlet syndrome, why the heck are we doing a chest press? Why are we doing an exercise that's going to work the pectoralis major primarily? All right, a muscle that you already know is going to be tight, facilitated in a patient who has thoracic outlet or rounded shoulder posturing. All right, so already I'm like, uh, don't like that. How is that really going to help thoracic outlet? If anything, we should be working on the retractors, right, not the pecs. And then static stretching of the deep neck flexors. Well, why the heck would you stretch out deep neck flexors? They're already weak. They're already inhibited in a patient with bad posture. All right, if anything, those muscles are typically lengthened, typically weak. So you definitely don't want to do A. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and eliminate A. I don't know if y'all can see this green color or not, but we're going to go with it. It's Halloween, baby. All right, let's look at B. B says static stretching of the upper trapezius and the levator scap. Hmm, okay, I like this. I like this because the upper trapezius and the levator scap now, they both do elevation of the, the scapula, right? They both do that. So we would want to work those. Definitely stretch those out for sure. But what is that doing for really the thoracic outlet syndrome? What is that doing for the thoracic outlet syndrome? What is that doing for the rotary winging either? I mean, it's doing nothing for those. And you really have to think about, well, what causes thoracic outlet? What are the major reasons why we even have that condition? Well, number one reason is the tightness or, or or just compression of the brachial plexus by the scalenes, the anterior middle scalenes. They become hypertrophied, tight, facilitated, and they compress. And that's what causes the paresthesias down the arm. That's what causes the thoracic outlet. So that's number one, but it doesn't say anything about scalene. So, okay, that's out. One of the other major reasons that you can get it is by compression of the pectoralis major. I mean, pectoralis minor, I'm sorry. Pectoralis minor becomes tight and it compresses directly on the brachial plexus as well, out towards more of the shoulder. That's another way that we can get it. All right, and so those are the major reasons for the presentation of thoracic outlet. Not the only reasons, but those are the major ones. Upper trap wasn't a part of what I just told you. Neither was levator. And so for that reason, I don't like B. Is B a, a good answer? Yes, I do like it. It's something that we would want to do because it'll address the elevated right scapula, but it's not addressing all of what we need to address. It's not really addressing the condition itself. Y'all feel me on that? Does that make sense? All right, I see you, AB. So let's go ahead and let's get rid of, uh, let's get a, rid of B for right now. I don't like it. All right, it just doesn't answer the question the way I like it. All right, let's look at C. C says wall push-ups, cool, and static upper trap stretching. So we already said that the static upper trap stretching is a good thing. We already said that that's cool. You're trying to stretch that out. That might help with that elevated right scapula. Cool. But the other piece is the wall push-ups. Is this correct? Right here. Is wall push-ups correct? And so I need y'all to tell me, I need you to think for a second, why would we even do wall push-ups? Why would we even do that exercise? I think in the, in the answer choices that I was getting, not answer choices, but the, what people were saying actually on the post, 
for the, this question. People were saying, well, serratus anterior, I was seeing that name, serratus anterior. Cool. So wall push-ups is an exercise that will help for the serratus anterior, especially the, the plus. You know, when you're getting that last end range protraction, it really helps the serratus. But here's the deal. The question never says anything about serratus anterior weakness. Serratus anterior weakness doesn't have much to do with thoracic outlet specifically. And it doesn't have anything to do really with rotary winging. Medial border winging, yes, but not rotary winging. All right, and so the serratus anterior, trying to use the wall push-ups for that, I don't like it. I, I really don't like that. And so C just doesn't fit the bill. But let's look at D. Let's see if D's really the right answer, though, if it truly answers the question the best. It's a static stretching of the pectoralis minor. Well, hold on a minute. Can pectoralis minor cause thoracic outlet syndrome? Yes, it can. All right. Can pectoralis minor tightness cause rotary winging? Yes, it can. Okay. Okay. And so definitely I would want to do some static stretching of the pectoralis minor. That fits. Levator scap. Can it elevate that right scapula? Yes, it can. So that's definitely something I would want to do as well. D is the best answer. It is the best intervention to address the patient's condition. Final answer is D. Let's freaking get it. Every single one of you who got this answer correct, congratulations. For those of you who didn't, y'all saw how I went through this question. You saw how I broke down thoracic outlet and I utilized the understanding of that condition to arrive at the correct answer.